Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, a lot has been said today, but I really felt I should add just maybe a few cents more to this conversation. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the pension amendment bill before us today. And as you've heard from the speakers before me, it is an extremely important amendment. And that amendment is to insert a clause where a minimum amount will be paid to our pensioners, which is $725 to government pensioners. Mr. Speaker, the member, our Prime Minister and member for Castro East in his presentation did indicate that on average, we, about 130 persons would benefit with an average increase of about $400 more. Some of them, those were getting 300, between 300 and 14 to 350 dollars, would be getting an extra 400 dollars in their pay packet. So, Mr. Speaker, for me, as a parliamentary rep for Soufre for Shejak, but also as someone who has sat and worked with pensioners through the NIC, I understand fully what we are doing today, Mr. Speaker. Because I know from my experience within the NIC, there is a whole issue of always remaining persons to plan for retirement. But Mr. Speaker, especially the worker at the lower end of the strata, whose salary could barely make it, the planning for retirement is always a challenge. So you have government pensioners, some of them teachers, some of them nurses, some of them policemen, and civil servants who have served us with dignity and they are now on pension and they are receiving $350, $329. Some of them could barely pay their utility bills, some of them cannot pay their rent, some of them cannot afford proper food. So the purpose and objective of this adjustment, Mr. Speaker, is to ensure that we uplift the dignity of our pensioners, the quality of life of our pensioners. And we've heard a lot from the members before us in terms of some of the issues, other social issues and programs that our government have made possible. We've heard from about the UHC. And for me, the free medication for diabetics, persons with hypertension, the 80 plus program to mention a few. But Mr. Speaker, I also want to bring here today Another program, it's not a program that, was, that received the blessing of this house, but I know from my association with the NIC that again, since we came into office, we have brought back the NIC Golden Citizens Card, Mr. Speaker. And with this particular card, it was introduced by the Central Labor Party administration when we were there. When I sat at the NIC, we introduced this card. Then it was put on a pause. Mr. Speaker, a few months ago at my office, an elderly lady came and she showed me that she had a broken fridge, so she went to get one. The fridge cost $2,999. But with her NIC gold card, she was able to get a 15% discount, a reduction of $449 on one transaction, Mr. Speaker. That is telling you the impact of some of the programs that we are putting together. So today we are talking about increasing uh, the average pensions, pensioners' income by another $400. But I'm also saying that some of the other programs that this government have put in place, social programs, looking at the NIC and increasing that pension, minimum pension to 500, bringing that gold card, and that's the NIC gold card, Mr. Speaker, but I want to tell you that the NIC has reached out to the Government Pension Association 
and now government pensioners can benefit from this same gold card, Mr. Speaker. That is a government that is focused on assisting the poor and the needy and those who are less fortunate. So, Mr. Speaker, I sat here today and I must tell you that I was disappointed at the approach taken by the leader of the opposition in terms of his comments in this honorable house today. And some of the things that he articulated, he spoke about the um, inflation, he spoke about whether this government is going to ask the bakers um, to bring, back the, bring down the price of bread, the, the member for Miku South also spoke about the government um, reducing the price of gasoline to, um, gasoline to less than $15. But Mr. Speaker, I am one who only be, I believe, and I think we all know that, that it is only the truth that is going to set us free. Yeah. Only the truth that will set us free. And I want to present facts, not speculation. And we have reported it in this house. For the financial year 2023-2024, the government subsidy for basic flour and sugar was about $11 million, Mr. Speaker. That is fact. The subsidy on a 20 pound cylinder of gas at present is $16.36. So anytime somebody goes out now and the cost of a 20 pound cylinder is $36. And the government is subsidizing that with $16.36. The cost of a 22 pound cylinder is $39.60 and the government is subsidizing that by $17.99. So how can the member for Miku South and the leader of the opposition talk about inflation or giving the impression that this government is not reaching out to support the, and, and it's not only the pensioners there, Everybody in St. Lucia who has, who's gone out to purchase a tank of gas, this government, before they can cook something, has given them $16.36 on every tank, Mr. Speaker. So we must speak, when we speak here, because we have taken a commitment, we've made a commitment to serve the people of St. Lucia. When we speak in this honorable house, we need to present the facts to the people. We cannot stand here the leader of the opposition ought not to stand here and speak about inflation. Inflation as we know it, at the moment, is a worldwide issue. You hear it from the US, you hear it from England, you hear it from everywhere. All of us listen to CNN every day. It is a challenge. When we think of some of the social programs by, by President Biden, inflation is still the issue that is Yes, it's still an issue impacting everybody. So when we speak in this honorable house and we are speaking to the people of St. Lucia, we need to present the facts. Because in St. Lucia, it's imported inflation we have. It's imported inflation. It started with COVID. It continued with the two wars. When we speak, we need to speak the truth. And it is only the truth that is set us free. So that's the information we have here. We have a government that continues to subsidize any time. We purchase a bag of flour for $128. We sell it to the bakers at $85. That is the government of the people subsidizing. So any time somebody purchases a loaf of bread in this country, this government have paid for part of that bread. And Mr. Speaker, I must tell you, that earlier this year, I was at a function, and the reality of the function, and I'm quoting from a Canadian who was at the function, and that Canadian said, no, it's true. That I cannot believe 
that I can buy bread in St. Lucia cheaper than in Canada. That was sold to me by a Canadian. And that, the flour is manufactured, the wheat is grown in Canada. Yeah. You can buy bread in St. Lucia cheaper than you can buy it in Canada. Fact. Fact. That is a subsidy we have, and we must tell our people that. Because if we don't tell them, they will not appreciate it and don't understand the impact of what our government is doing. Today, we are in government. You are in opposition. Tomorrow, you may be there. So speak the truth, because it is only the truth that will set, we free, set us free. That truth must be told to our people, that this government continues to subsidize bread it, through flour. It continues to subsidize sugar. It continues to subsidize cooking gas. And all the other social programs that we put in place is because you have a government that cares. So I want to support this amendment here. And the other fact I want to tell you, there is no secret about GPH. I need to tell you that I'm traveling to, to the Bahamas this week to ensure that I get the details of my Sufre GPH program in place. Fact. No speculation there. Fact. Fact. I am traveling. I am traveling to the Bahamas so that I can put the finishing touches, agree the finishing touches. I will not answer you on that answer. We have given you all the details, but I'm just telling you a fact. I don't want you to speculate. I am leaving this week to go out to the Bahamas to ensure that the GPH, the Sufra port, is addressed. That is what the people of Sufra are interested in. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the Honorable Prime Minister and Member for Castries East for his servant leadership and for his compassion for the people of St. Lucia. And I, Mr. Speaker, I support this amendment wholeheartedly.